Hey guys, what's going on? It's Slacker here, back to you with the sixth episode of the Kansas Rebuild Franchise Dynasty. In this episode, we start off with signing our very first commit. It is going to be 73 overall center, which yes, we needed one of those two for next year. We're also going to go through our ready to visit, kind of see what players we're going to get to visit, when we're going to get the um, get them to visit. I try to stack as many as I possibly can in one week that go together well. So basically, if a person like a wide receiver and a running back um, and a quarterback all want to come visit, I try to put them on the same week. That way, they get complimentary visits and get more points per each visit. As you can see here, a linebacker and a strong safety are wanting to visit. I put them on the same week because they do complimentary complement each other and we get more points by just doing that basically you get 50 per complimentary person however you got to pay attention if you do have too many at one position coming you do also get a negative bonus so you want to make sure that you kind of pay attention to when you want your big recruits to show up what kind of positions they are athletes are sometimes hard to do um, certain athletes come in at you know like a, it'll say like a uh, athlete but when you try to put them in there, it'll say quarterback or something like that. So you've got to really kind of pay attention to that stuff when you're doing your recruiting and when you're scheduling your visits. I try to make my visits for the hardest opponent that you think you can beat. I do that because if they're a top 25 team or top 10 team, you get more points if you beat them. So I try to do that. If I don't think I can beat them, like if we're going against like number two overall or something and they're undefeated, and it's at home and we're not doing so well this year it's probably not a good idea to have them come this week this is our fifth week and it is a bye week so we're going to go ahead and go on to week number six do some follow-up recruiting in week six i wanted to go over and show you the top 25 polls right now as through five weeks of the season alabama is still number one they're three and oh georgia three and oh ohio state four and oh oregon three and oh florida state three and oh as well I kind of wanted to just go through here and look um, kind of how teams are doing. And like Clemson, their one loss is against number two, Georgia. So that doesn't, you know, that's why they're two and one and still um, number six overall. I also want to look at some of the big 12 teams like Oklahoma, who's three and oh, Texas, who's three and one. They lost to K-State last week. They dropped from number six to number 10. So K-State is actually who we're doing most of our recruits against. Um, the reason we do that is a rivalry game, which gives you extra points in recruiting. Also, you get extra points for beating rivals, ranked opponents, stuff like that. And K-State's pretty much all of those right now. TCU is number 15 at 2-1. and one. Texas Tech, who's who we play this week, they're down to number 20. So if we can get a win here, we might see ourselves in the top 25. We also have Oklahoma State, who's in the top 25 right now. So they actually have quite a few big 12 teams right now in the top 25, which is good for us. If we could pull off some big wins here, we will get some help when it comes to entering the pools. So basically, we're just going through our recruits in week five, setting up visits. We're going to have a lot of week 14 visits against K-State. As you can see here, this player also, also has K-State in their top school so if we could be k-state that would really really help going forward on these recruits however you also have to keep in mind that some recruits don't aren't going to last until week 14 and you might lose them if you don't do a week sooner so it's kind of smart to spread them out kind of however if you got a guy that's really really high percentage you want to kind of put him earlier in the weeks so that they can they can come visit and you can get that recruiting bonus before they sign so going over the review preview for texas tech kirk herbstreet thinks that texas tech is going to win this game they are number 17 overall 4-0 on the year 1-0 in conference they are b overall rating b plus offense b minus defense as you can see their offense completely blows kansas out of the water however i do think that we will have a good day against Texas Tech. I think it's going to be a complete shootout. Heaps not having a bad year. Our running backs are going crazy right now. It looks like their passer and their running back 
or at least their top rusher are the same guy so i'm expecting a lot of option here from texas tech but it's weird because i know that they do a lot of passing so i'm thinking the quarterback's going to basically drop back the pass and if he doesn't have anybody he's going to run so need to think of that when it comes into making the game plan on if we're going to blitz if we're going to do a quarterback spy stuff like that will come into play right here football 14 pregame show presented by Nissan innovation that excites Texas Tech's been hitting on all cylinders the last few games they've ripped off a string of W's trying to extend that streak but the key is keeping Big Mo on your side that's going to do it for us here on the pregame show NCAA football 14 action coming at you right now Fred Nessler and Kirk Herbstreit Memorial Stadium in Lawrence, Kansas. Excitement is in the air. And now let's head down to the coin toss. We're brought to you by Coke Zero. Real Coca-Cola taste and zero calorie. Enjoy everything. It is a home game for us, opening off the Big 12 play. We're going to play Texas Tech this week. Number 17 overall. We are getting close to the top 25. We need a big win here against Texas Tech in order to be looked at for a top 25 bid. I think, if I remember right, we're down at like a 37 range, which is a huge from where we started at the beginning of the season, around in the 200s. Texas Tech back to pass. Very first play of the game, they're going to get eight yards. They're pretty much going to run hurry up the whole game. Also going to be making a lot of passes. A huge screen right here that I run right by the wide receiver. So he's going to get a huge gain here to start off the game. They got first and goal after a 58-yard reception. Second and goal. We were going to go back to pass. Going to throw over to the middle of the ward. He is going to get it into the end zone. So Eric Ward is going to score the first touchdown of the game. Texas Tech is going to go up 7-0 on the first drive. Our first drive, we start with a Sims run here on first and 10. After a decent return, he's going to gain 8 yards there. The very next play, Heap's going to get a huge pitch to Cox. Going to get a lot of yards here. Going to finish up with a 30-yard gain, 38-yard gain on that run option pass. Back to pass, Heaps going to get sacked on first down, making it second and 18 for us from the 27-yard line. Third and 12, back to pass, looking for someone. McKay, open, going to get into the end zone with help from the defensive player, basically letting him in the end zone. Jake Heaps, one for one with a touchdown. Talk about a perfect way to start a game. Even if it was a wobbly pass, still got in the end zone, still going to tie the game up at seven apiece. Texas Tech with a quick pass over to Grant. He's going to gain the needed yards to gain that first down. Texas Tech on the move. Second possession of the game. Back to pass, which is pretty much what they did the whole game. Going to get a first down here for Marquez. Try to jump that, but the game doesn't allow you to jump those routes. So Amaro's going to get the catch. Going to gain 25 yards and going to get a first down. We did hold them at goal line gonna have to kick the field goal the kick it it's up it's good texas tech goes up 10 to 7 in the first quarter trying to put another run together here cox with the pitch same exact play from our huge game we got in our first drive this one however is going to score a touchdown off to a good start here taylor cox over 100 yards rushing already in the first quarter that's pretty good for backup running back we're up 14 10 Texas Tech doing what they do best, throwing. Going to get a screen pass open to the running back. He's going to take that for a 27-yard gain. Back to pass. Another screen on third and 18. Was not expecting the screen run right by the running back, allowing him to get the needed yards for the first down. Going to fumble and sack. On the quarterback there, we're going to get the ball close to our goal line. We are going to get back fourth and four. Not able to get anything done on third down, so we're going to have to punt it on fourth and four. Texas Tech got the ball back. They're going for the first down with an option themselves. They're going to get negative one yards and not able to get that first down. So they're going to have to punt it. 
the next KU possession. We got a pass over the middle to Pearson. He's going to get flipped up there, but he is going to gain a first down. Goal line carry for Sims on third and goal. Not able to get in the end zone. We're stuck here with a field goal. Texas Tech trying to score before the half. There's under two minutes left in the first half. Texas Tech trying to get on the board, tie the game up at halftime. Marquez with another great reception on the sideline for the first down. Texas Tech still pushing at the 116 yard. Another first down, this one from Grant. Amaro going to get the screen pass. It gets enough. It gets a nine yards on the play. Not enough for the first down, however. Did stop the play. Going to get it Wheeler on an out route on this one. He is going to get the first down with 50 seconds left. Texas Tech is going to throw it over the middle to Wheeler for the touchdown. 17-17. We're kind of just scrapping right now. We do get a huge break here. Not really, not really trying to get a, a first down or anything. We're just kind of throwing, see what happens. We did get the first down. We take a timeout. We get another first down from Pearson here, and we are in luck to try to kick this huge field goal off the bar. Not able to hit the field goal, so we go in the halftime, 17 to 17. Heaps, huge pass over the middle, wide open receiver, and the game doesn't allow me to catch it. So we're not going to get that touchdown, even though it's wide open. The pass was a little behind, but not too bad. Texas Tech trying to take advantage of that missed opportunity. They're driving on the field on their first possession of the second half. They're unable to get to the end zone, so they're going to have to kick a field goal. They do kick the field goal and make it there up 20 to 17 in the third quarter. We come down, we're trying to get a break here. Sims gonna get us a pretty big gain there of nine yards. Trying to get that running game going. Trying to also mix in some passing here like we do over the middle to Pearson. Great catch by Pearson. He is our number one wide receiver and we would expect nothing less than great plays like that. The very next play, Sims gets hurt. He's down. He's done for the game. We're not happy about that, but Pearson is still a lethal weapon. He's going to get the touchdown pass over the middle for 18 yards and put us up 24 to 20. Texas Tech back. Going to get sacked by Tavai. Keep that in mind. Going to get sacked again by Tavai. Back-to-back -back sacks by Tavai. And what happens next is another sack. No, it was not Tavai, but three sacks in a row is going to get Texas Tech back fourth and 30. They go ahead and punt it. We get a huge run by our backups, backup Darian Miller. He's going to be our number one go-to as he is the fastest running back we have on the roster right now. Jake Heap's going to keep it on this option. Going to get the first down. Back to pass on second and six. Huge catch by McKay. He's going to score his second touchdown of the game. Great time to score a touchdown there by McKay. He's kind of been our wide receiver we don't look at much just because he's always our number one and he's getting covered by the best corners in the game. However, he catches this right over the cornerback and scores a touchdown. Up 31-20 to 20 with... Five minutes in the fourth quarter. Of course, Texas Tech is not going to roll over here. They're going to try to push it down the field with what they do best, pass after pass after pass. Pass to the corner of the end zone. Intercepted. User picked by Linton. Huge interception. I was a little worried I was going to get a safety on there since I caught it kind of before the end zone and hurtled out of the side of the end zone. However, we did not get the safety call. We got it on the 20-yard line, and Darian Miller with an 18-yard rush up the middle. He's got nine rushes, 67 yards, about a seven average on the run. Heat's rolling out to the right. He's going to keep it, try to get that first down on third and nine. He does. They were able to stop. 
with all their timeouts, we were not able to get another first down. So we go ahead and kick a field goal, putting us up 34-20 to 20 at this point. That is the end of the game. That is what the final score ends up being. Huge win for KU right now going into Big 12 play. They start out 1-0. Right now I'm feeling really good about our team. We are worried about our running back situation with Sims Hurt. However, he was just out for the game, and he will be back next game, which he will be needed. Pearson with another big game here. Also a big game on our defensive end with a bunch of tackles. We do lead the NCA in tackles, so I'm going to adjust the quarter length so that we don't get so many tackles on defense because... We have like the top five tacklers in the NCA. Don't want that to happen, so I'm gonna change that up a little bit. But I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I am back from my honeymoon, so videos will be coming soon. Till next time, slacker out.